The Toyota War Arabic, Herb Twitha Harb Tuita, French, Guerre des Toyota is the name commonly given to the last phase of the Chadian-Libyan conflict, which took place in 1987 in northern Chad and on the Libyan-Chadian border. It takes its name from the Toyota pickup trucks used, primarily the Toyota Helix and the Toyota Land Cruiser, to provide mobility for the Chadian troops as they fought against the Libyans. The 1987 war resulted in a heavy defeat for Libya, which, according to American sources, lost one-tenth of its army, with 7,500 men killed and $1.5 billion worth of military equipment destroyed or captured. Chadian losses were 1,000 men killed. The war began with the Libyan occupation of northern Chad in 1983, when Libya's leader Muammar Gaddafi, refusing to recognize the legitimacy of the Chadian president Hissine Habre, militarily supported the attempt by the opposition transitional government of National Unity to overthrow Habre. The plan was foiled by the intervention of France which, first with Operation Manta and later with Operation Epervier, limited Libyan expansion to north of the 16th parallel, in the most arid and sparsely inhabited part of Chad. In 1986 the Gunt rebelled against Gaddafi, stripping Libya of its main cover of legitimacy for its military presence in Chad. Seeing an occasion to unify Chad behind him, Habre ordered his forces to pass the 16th parallel so as to link with the Gunt rebels who were fighting the Libyans in Tibesti in December. A few weeks later a bigger force struck at Fada, destroying the local Libyan garrison. In three months, combining the methods of guerrilla and conventional warfare in a common strategy, Habre was able to retake almost all of northern Chad, and in the following months, inflicted new heavy defeats on the Libyans, until a ceasefire putting an end to the conflict was signed in September. The ceasefire left open the issue of the disputed Ayuzu Strip, which was eventually assigned to Chad by the International Court of Justice in 1994. Topic. Background. Since 1983 Chad was de facto partitioned, with the northern half controlled by the rebel transitional government of National Unity Gunt, headed by Gokoni Aude and supported on the ground by Libyan forces, while the south was held by the western-backed Chadian government guided by Hissin Habre. This partition on 16th parallel the so-called Red Line into Libyan and French zones of influence was informally recognized by France in 1984, following an accord between France and Libya to withdraw their forces from Chad. The accord was not respected by Libya, which maintained at least 3,000 men stationed in northern Chad, during the period between 1984 and 1986, in which no major clash took place. Habre greatly strengthened his position thanks to Western support and Libya's failure to respect the Franco Libyan 1984 agreement. From 1984 onwards, the Gunt also suffered increasing factional tensions, centered on the fight between Gokoni and Akik ibn Omar over the leadership of the organization. Taking advantage of the GUNT's difficulties, Habre struck a series of accords with smaller rebel factions, which left the Gunt at the beginning of 1986 with only three of the eleven factions that had originally signed the Lagos Accord in 1979. The remaining factions were Gukuni's People's Armed Forces FAP, Akik's Armed Branch of the Democratic Revolutionary Council CDR, and that part of the Chadian Armed Forces FAT, which had maintained its loyalty to Wadel Abdelkader Kamugwe. Topic. Forces on the ground At the opening of 1987, the last year of the war, the Libyan expeditionary force was still impressive, comprising 8,000 soldiers, 300 tanks, many multiple rocket launchers rocket artillery, and regular artillery pieces, Mi-24 helicopters and 60 combat aircraft. These forces did not have a unified command, but were divided into an operational group south, active in the Tibesti with 2,500 men, and an operational group east, centered in Faya Largo, apparently formidable. The Libyan military disposition in Chad was marred by serious flaws. The Libyans were prepared for a war in which they would provide ground and air support to their Chadian allies, act as assault infantry, and provide reconnaissance. By 1987, however, Muammar Gaddafi had lost his allies, exposing Libya's inadequate knowledge of the area. Libyan garrisons came to resemble isolated and vulnerable islands in the Chadian Sahara. Also important was the low morale among the troops, who were fighting in a foreign country, and the structural disorganization of the military of Libya, which was in part induced by Muammar Gaddafi's fear of a military coup against him. 
This fear led him to avoid the professionalization of the armed forces. The Libyans had also to deal with the greatly strengthened Chadian National Armed Forces, FANT, which was composed of 10,000 highly motivated soldiers, led by experienced and able commanders, such as Idris Deby, Hassan Jamis, and head of state Hissine Habre himself. And while Fant previously had no air power, limited mobility and few anti-tank and anti-aircraft weapons, by 1987 it could count on the French Air Force to keep Libyan aircraft grounded and, most importantly, to provide 400 state-of-the-art Toyota pickups equipped with Milan anti-tank guided missiles. It is these trucks that gave the name, Toyota War, to this last phase of the Chadian-Libyan conflict. <laughs> Libyan expulsion. Habre selected as the first target for his reconquest of northern Chad the well-fortified Libyan communications base of Fada. It was defended by 2,000 Libyans and the bulk of the Democratic Revolutionary Council CDR militia Gaddafi's closest Chadian allies, well provided with armor and artillery. Hassan Jamis, the 30-year-old Fant commander-in-chief, pitched about 4,000 to 5,000 men against Fada's Libyan garrison. Taking advantage of his army's superior knowledge of the terrain, which apparently included unknown access points to the base, Jamis avoided a frontal assault and used his FOSS's high mobility to surround the Libyan positions and then unleashed his troops, destroying the defending garrison. In the battle, 784 Libyans were killed and 100 tanks destroyed, while only 50 Fant soldiers died. The unexpected defeat stunned Gaddafi, who then reacted on January 4 by recalling to service all of the army reservists. In an act of defiance towards France, he also ordered the bombing of Arada, well south of the 16th parallel. France retaliated with a new airstrike on Wadi Dome and destroyed their radar system, effectively blinding the Libyan air force in Chad for several months. Gaddafi attempted to contain the Fant threat by rushing several new battalions into Chad especially to Faya Largo and Wadi Dome, including units of the elite Revolutionary Guard. This brought the amount of Libyan forces in the country to a total of 11,000 by March. In March 1987, the main Libyan air base of Wadi Dome was captured by Chadian forces. Although strongly defended by minefields, 5,000 soldiers, tanks, armored vehicles, and aircraft, the Libyan's base fell to a smaller Chadian attacking force led by Jamis equipped with trucks mounted with machine guns and anti tank weapons. Observers estimated that, in the Chadian victories in the first three months of 1987, more than 3,000 Libyan soldiers had been killed, captured, or deserted. Large numbers of tanks, armored personnel carriers, artillery, fixed-wing aircraft, and helicopters were captured or destroyed. In some cases, Libya sent its own aircraft to bomb abandoned Libyan equipment to deny its use to the Chadians. It was reported that, in many cases, Libyan soldiers had been killed while fleeing to avoid battle. At Wadi Dome, panicked Libyans had suffered high casualties running through their own minefields. The fall of Wadi Dome was a severe setback for Libya. Deserted by most of their Chadian allies, Libyan forces found themselves isolated in foreign territory, and the loss of the main Libyan air base in Chad prevented Libya from providing close air cover to its troops. In general, the offensive against Fant had exposed the vulnerability of Libya's heavy armor to a more mobile enemy. On Gaddafi's orders, a general withdrawal was undertaken from Borku Enedi Tabesti Prefecture, beginning with Faya Largo. The town had served as the main Libyan base during the preceding four years, but was in danger of being encircled. Its garrison of 3,000 men, together with the survivors of Wadi Dome, retired toward the Libyan base at Ma'atan as Sara, north of the Chadian border. In an attempt to reduce the damage inflicted to his international standing, Gaddafi announced that Libya had won the confrontation, and was now leaving Chad so that the opposition could play its part in fighting Habre. These military actions left Habre in control of Chad and in a position to threaten the expulsion of Libya from the Ayuzu Strip, affected the international perception of Libya as a significant regional military power, and cast renewed doubt on the competence and determination of Libyan soldiers, especially in engagements beyond the country's borders to which they evidently felt no personal commitment. The Toyota War attracted considerable interest in the United States, where the possibility of using Habre to overthrow Gaddafi was given serious consideration. As part of the Reagan administration's support for his government, Habre, during a visit to Washington, received a pledge of $32 million worth of aid, including Stinger anti-aircraft missiles. Topic. Renewed Chadian Offensive 
In August 1987, the encouraged Chadians carried their offensive into the disputed Aoyuzu Strip, occupying the town of Aoyuzu following another battle in which the Libyans suffered severe losses in troops and abandoned equipment. In retaliation, Libya intensified its air bombardments of towns in the north, usually from altitudes beyond the range of FANT's shoulder-fired missiles. Appeals by Habre for French air missions to defend the area against the bombing were rejected, as Aoyuzu had been retaken against the wishes of French President François Mitterrand. Instead, Mitterrand called for international mediation to settle competing claims to the disputed territory. After a succession of counterattacks, toward the end of August, the Libyans finally drove the 400 Chadian soldiers out of the town. This victory the first by Libyan ground forces since the start of the Toyota War was apparently achieved through close-range air strikes, which were followed by ground troops advancing cross-country in jeeps, Toyota all-terrain trucks, and light-armored vehicles. For the Libyans, who had previously relied on ponderous tracked armor, the assault represented a conversion to the desert warfare tactics developed by Fant. To highlight the victory, Gaddafi flew foreign journalists to the region, so the news of his victory could reach the headlines. Habre quickly reacted to this setback and to the continued bombing of Fant concentrations in northern Chad. On September 5, 1987 he mounted a surprise raid against the key Libyan air base at Matan al Sarah. Reportedly, 1,000 Libyans were killed, 300 were captured, and hundreds of others were forced to flee into the surrounding desert. Chad claimed that its troops destroyed about 32 aircraft including MiG-21 and MiG-23 fighters, Su-22 fighter bombers, and Mi-24 helicopters before the Fant column withdrew to Chadian soil. The attack had been opposed by France, who refused to provide Fant with intelligence and logistical support, causing Fant to suffer considerable losses. The French defense minister André Giraud let it be known that France was not implicated in any way in the attack and had not been informed of it. The American reaction was markedly different, as it had previously supported the attempted reconquest of the Aoyuzu Strip, it now welcomed the Chadian raid. Topic ceasefire Because of domestic opposition, internal demoralization, and international hostility, Gaddafi assumed a more conciliatory attitude following his defeat. On the other side, Habre also found himself vulnerable, as the French feared that the attack on Ma'atan as Sarah was only the first stage of a general offensive into Libya proper, a possibility that France was not disposed to tolerate. As a result, Mitterrand forced Habre to accept the mediation efforts of the Organization of African Unity's chairman, Kenneth Conda of Zambia, which resulted in a ceasefire on September 11. It was assumed that war would, sooner or later, resume, but in the end the ceasefire violations were relatively minor. Gaddafi announced in May 1988 that he would recognize Habre as president of Chad as a gift to Africa, even if Libya refused to leave the disputed Aoyuzu Strip. On October 3 the two countries resumed diplomatic relations, and another important step was made when the two countries agreed in September 1990 to refer the dispute to the International Court of Justice. On February 3, 1994 the court ruled in favor of Chad, thus definitively solving the Aoyuzu controversy by assigning the territory to the southern country. Topic notes Topic References Azevedo, Mario J. 1998. Roots of Violence, A History of War in Chad. Routledge. ISBN 90-5699-582-0. Brecker, Michael and Wilkenfeld, Jonathan A Study in Crisis. University of Michigan Press. ISBN 0-472-10806-9. Clayton, Anthony Frontiersmen, Warfare in Africa since 1950. Routledge. ISBN 1-85728-525-5. Colello, Thomas. 1990. Chad. USGPO. ISBN 0 16 024770 5. Metz, Helen Chapin. 2004. Libya. USGPO. ISBN 1 4191 3012 9. Nonsop, Guy Jeremy. 1986. Chad, Vinct ans de Cries. In French. Larmatin. ISBN 2-85802-687-4. Nolachungu, Sam C. Limits of Anarchy, Intervention and State Formation in Chad. University of Virginia Press. ISBN 0-8139-1628-3. Pollock, Kenneth M. Arabs at War, Military Effectiveness, 1948-1991. University of Nebraska Press. 
ISBN 0-8032-3733-2. Simons, Jeff Libya and the West, From Independence to Lockerbie. I. B. Tories. ISBN 1-86064-988-2. Le Pickup des Guerrilleros, La Revolution Toyota and Libye Tristan Ranks. Fluctuate.net.